hellhole. My name is Mike Pfaff, and this is my YouTube channel, Living in the Illusion. Now, last time we got together, a little controversial, as some of these videos have turned out to be. Uh, and, the, and, and it is still on our board here. We haven't changed it, but we will shortly. So last time we got together, and this again is a little review because the next one will be tied very closely to this one. So just to kind of keep things straight, uh, what we talked about is don't try to change the past. It's gone. The past is gone. The only thing we have left of the past are memories. And this went through the process of making memories in the present moment. Uh, so real quickly, because uh, we got to move on. Uh, this is like a continuous uh, casting furnace. In other words, we put stuff in the top, we get stuff out the bottom. So in the top, we put our sensory input from all of our five senses. Out of that, we filter it. We filter the input from what we know, which is our memories, our life experiences, our belief system. So we filter that input information from our belief system and throw out, right over here, boop, throw out what doesn't match our beliefs, our values, our experiences, whatever you want to call it, that we know to be true for us individually. Out of what's left over, out of what's left over, that's why this little chaos thing here, uh, we create our world, the world that we have out of meaningful information for us. And we make memories of that creation, we make memories, which means we create the memories. The memories don't come from the outside. The memories don't come from the infinite outside energy system. They come from your inside creation. And the memories end up, that's why I said this was a little cookie uh, 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 platform here. Your memories, which you create, ends up in the subconscious mind and becomes part of the filtering system for the future. So it's a, it's a loop system. And so you are creating memories in every moment. Now this is what we're gonna we're gonna shift, but I want to make sure you get this. You are creating memories after memories after memories after memories after memories after memories in each moment that goes by, and those memories end up in the subconscious mind, and on a conscious level, you have no idea how many memories you are making. Thousands and thousands and thousands of memories that you put up here. The older you get, the more memories you have. Now on a conscious level, you don't know they're there. You don't experience them. You only have certain ones. Oh, I got married. I remember that memory. I got divorced. Oh, I remember that memory. I had kids. Oh, I remember that. But in between each one of those are many, 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 many memories. Why am I stressing this? 
because we're going to talk about the fact, the fact. We can't find any memories inside the brain. We can't find one memory. Now, we have a lot of theories about where the memory should be and must be, but we can't find them. The latest uh, theory is around what they call memory consolidation. And if you have any information on that, on how you find the memory in the brain, I'd be interested in you passing that on to me. But my understanding is you can't find a memory in the brain. So we can talk about that at some length, but let's, for our purposes now, just make believe there's no memories in your brain. For some of you, that will be easy. For others, you might turn this off, say, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. So let's just see what happens. So we're going to change this now, but just remember, there are no memories that we can find in any way in the brain. Uh, so, in a moment, we'll be back with today's topic. And this is our topic for today. And so I'll read it. You cannot find any memories in the brain. Oh, that is a controversial statement for sure. And who is saying it? Uh, not a mathematician, not a physicist, just somebody that is thinking and with my engineering background, I think a little engineering rather than physics. So in this here, uh, no memories in the brain. Uh, and I, I originally uh, looked up a little song about memories. And there is an old song, 1915 song. And, it, and if I could sing, I would sing it, but I'll, I'll kind of hump to myself as I say this. Memories, memories, dreams of love, so true. And of course, then it goes on. Uh, but it's all about memories, what they are, how true they are. But where are they? Where are they? Well, why is that important? You're your memories. If you want to change, if you want to change, listen closely here, you have to change your belief system. Because you operate on your belief system. You want to change your belief system, you have to change what makes up the belief system, which is memories. And if you want to change your world in a positive way, you have to take the negative memories, heal them, change them, forgive yourself for what never happened, the way you absolutely believe it happened based upon your memories. Memories that you hold are creations. They are not coming from the outside as fact. They are created inside of you 
based upon what you believe about the world around you and about yourself has nothing to do with facts. Oh, you might say, well, I remember this and I remember that. You mean that's not true? Your interpretation of it, how you determine the memory, how you create the story is not true. Now, how true is it? That depends. Depends on what your belief system is, what you want to believe. Most of your core beliefs are in place by age three, and they don't change much. And the rest of your core beliefs are in place by age seven. And that's the foundation by that very young investigator of your world. And you create everything on top of that. So you're creating your memories the way they are. And therefore, you can change them. That's the important thing to remember. You can change your memories. Why? They didn't happen that way in the first place. That's a story that you keep telling yourself. And you keep believing that it's true and asking other people around you, do you remember this? Do you remember that? Do you remember this? And they will, but they'll remember their story. And you will interface that and thinking you're talking about the same story. You're not. Yours is completely different. Why would that be? They have different beliefs. They have different experiences. How you experience anything is uniquely yours, and how I experience it is uniquely mine. And they're not the same. But we will overlap certain things and say, oh, yeah, we're talking about the same thing. No, we're not. So, Memories are not in the brain. Can't find them. Good theories, none of them work. Sound good until you get into them, until you get into them, and then you find out, oh, they got feet of clay. They can't stand. They're wobbly. And that's why I'm saying that in such a positive way. There's no memories in the brain. Oh, if they're not in the brain, where are they? Where are they? Well, uh, outside the brain. There's two, uh, we, we already have a, a model, one model, of how that works, and I'm going to present another one. Uh, the model uh, I'm thinking about that works is something that we use with computers all the time now. In a computer, you don't have to keep the file physically in the computer. If you're working on a file, when you're done with the file, you put it in the cloud. You maintain a connection to the cloud. And when you want that file, you signal the cloud, and it comes down to the computer. So you don't have to have the memory in the brain. We have a working model of how that can be done 
through the cloud. Now you can play around with that and you can see how that might work. So that's one way. The other way that I kind of like is that the memory is held in the energy system around the body. Now look at these two. The cloud is also an energy system. The energy of the body radiates an energy system which is in the infinite energy system around you which we have called consciousness. So both of these approaches involve holding the memory in consciousness and being able to pull it in and out with our interface, with what we are always embedded in, which is consciousness, or the infinite energy system. So now, uh, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people have asked uh, for techniques. Well, how do I change memories? Because you say you have to change them. How do, I, how do I go about doing that? Okay, so we're going to talk about one of those ways now. And also looking at the energy system around the body. Now, uh, in some of my investigations, and you can check it out, there is a process called brain spotting, brain spotting. And it involves a person looking into the environment around them, into the infinite energy system around them, and finding something that when they observe it close, causes them to have a feeling in the body. Now we're talking about negative memories, so we're talking about when they reach this spot on the outside in the energy system, it causes an inside negative feeling. And it's called brain spotting. And the idea being that the outside spot is connected to the inside uh, traumatic memory. Now, the difference. There is no inside memory. The memory is in the infinite field around the body. So now, uh, I took a look at that and I said, no, it has nothing to do with an inside memory and where it's located in the brain. And they didn't find it either. They just, they tried to do some mathematics to show where it was located based upon how they found the spot out here didn't work out too well, as far as I know, as far as I know. Uh, so I have a little diagram here, uh, and I want to kind of explain it on what I call mind spotting. And I developed this off of looking at brain spotting. And I said, no, nah, there's something wrong with that. Because uh, there's an inner time I have... Two, two diagrams here, looking at the face, looking at the face, and looking at a side view. I have another one down there that we'll talk about later. So here we have this individual, it's a stick figure, and around him is an energy system. 
and has now we're looking at therapeutic methods and so as he is observing his environment around him the infinite energy system something catches his eye causing a flutter in the eye and this is done by an operator who has a pointer that they look at the end of the pointer, the ball of the pointer, and then as they move it around and their eyes follow, not their head, their head's not turning, at least not too much, and they're following this ball around and around and all of a sudden, boop, they say, oh, I feel something. Okay? So that's kind of what we're talking about. So there's an energy system here, there's an energy system, same system, but just a different view. And so I said, the memory's in the energy system. So I went and got a pointer, and I had to send away to Japan for this particular pointer, because I wanted to have a ball on it a ball to look at. And this pointer is, when I, when I showed it to people, they thought it was a weapon. Because uh, when you take it out, it's, it's pretty firm. You can knock somebody on the head and maybe they'll pass out. But I used it, the ball, in a particular way. It wasn't random going around watching what they were doing. It was a particular way. So let me hold this for a moment and give you what happened, how I, now we're talking about technique and memory. I had them bring up in their body a negative memory. They're going to feel it in the body. It's outside, but they're going to feel it in the body. So when they bring that energy up, by the way, this is also related one method to tapping, and tapping is related to uh, traditional Chinese medicine through the meridian system and acupuncture. So we're talking about the meridian system, and certain acupuncture points as we begin to work on memories. So I have them bring, think of the memory that they would like to change. And when I do, they, they feel sad or disappointed or anxious or depressed or uh, guilty or all kinds of Emotions will ride on that energy system around the memory. And then, why that energy is in their body, I start here at the nose of this little guy right here, as an example. And I take my low pointer and I put it about 18 inches in front of his nose. And I move it one way or the other. If I move it to the to my uh, right, his left, I ask the question, does the intensity of the memory go up or down? Is it more intense or less intense as I move the ball in one direction. If he says, well, uh, no difference, or the intensity goes down, I go back to the center point, and I go the other way. Okay? At some point, he will say, oh, that, that, that's worse. It's getting worse. And I say, okay, 
Just follow it. He says, okay, now it's getting better. I don't feel it as much. I go back to where the intensity is in that plane. We're looking at a plane now. So we go back to where the intensity is in the plane. And if, as an example, we move this direction, and he says, well, this is the most intense spot that he feels the memory. I say, okay. Then I take this spot, I start with this now, I put it where he says that spot is, and I go up, and I go down. And when I go up, I say, does the intensity go increase or decrease? If he says decrease, I come back and go down until we reach another spot on that plane where he says, well, that's pretty intense. Now, in this process, I've had people break down crying. I've had people say, stop, stop. I don't want to know no more. Because the intensity is so great related to that memory. Now, once I get this one, now we've got two planes this way and up and down, and we now have an intense spot. Okay? Now make believe this spot is right here on this figure. Then I go in and out again until asking the question, is it getting more intense or less intense? And 90% of the time, just about 90%, they'll tell you, Oh, that's intense, right there. That, that is the intensity. My understanding, in the energy field around them, in consciousness, that's where the memory is. It's not in brain. It's not in here, in brain. It's not. It's here. And that's why you can't find it in there. It's here. So now we have the X, Y, Z location for the memory. Now when I do that, when I reach that point with my little pointer here, okay, I put the ball there and I ask them to touch the ball. And then I say, I'm going to remove the pointer. You keep your finger in that location. So I take the ball away, and they keep the finger in that location, and I ask them to remember the location of that intense feeling. Now, all kinds of things happen. There's a dynamic system. So we have where the intensity is, where they feel it in the body. Uh, in, in this technique, uh, in brain spotting and this mind spotting, uh, there is a lot of close tie-in between EMDR. Uh, because you're working with the brain, uh, with uh, with the eye movements, you're working with all kinds of stuff going on, interfacing with this point. So once I know that point, once they memorize the point, then I go on and use other techniques, other therapeutic techniques, to work on the memory itself to work on the memory itself, to 
heal it. I like the word heal. To reprogram it. To reframe it. There's all kinds of words you can use to do that. And there's all kinds of techniques. When we have taken all of the energy out through, and I use tapping, all of the energy out of the meridian system and it neutralizes or stabilizes and they no longer have intensity around that memory and there's a lot to it that I'm not going into a lot of detail. I have them after. See, it's again changing memories. You're changing this memory. Usually their eyes are closed. Not necessarily, but most of the time their eyes are closed. And then they make changes. And then they open their eyes. When they open their eyes, the changes lock in as a new memory. You hear what I'm saying? You close your eyes, you work on the memory, you reframe it, you reprogram it, you heal it, and then when there's no energy in it, you open your eyes, you have a new memory. Now since you have a new memory stored in a different place, in the energy system, and then I have them touch the location of that very intense pop memory that is giving them so much trouble. Can't find it. The energy has dissipated. Well, think about the memory. What doesn't bother me? Well, it was so intense. Where did it go? I don't know, but it's not bothering me now. Well, check again. Is there anything? No, no, no energy disturbance in this energy field related to that memory. So, this is and and in the uh, video description, I go into I wrote all this down, kind of brief, but with this explanation, you may be able to follow it. I suggest people that do therapy uh, take a look at it and try it. Initially, I got you know like maybe 50% effective on finding the memory. As I honed the process, got closer to it, did it more often, <clears throat> it went up to 90%. It never turned out to be 100%. So there's other things involved that I'm not aware of or doesn't bother me. So when that happens, I just shift into another technique I know what I know underneath what I believe is the problem that the energy uh, that the uh, memory is here caught in their energy system and there are other techniques I want to stress that I don't know all the techniques but you change the energy system and now we're going to talk about I know I'm going fast but got to keep going. Uh, over here, I want you to look at this. Uh, I hope you can see it clearly. Uh, I have a guy. Here's his nose. He's looking that way. That's the front. That's the back. All your active memories in the energy system around you 
are in the front. All your inactive memories in the energy of system is in the back. You can find the new memory, but it will be back here. And there are certain techniques that you can use to move active memories into inactive. I know this is a lot to take in, but I wanted to let you know that there are techniques that will support you in changing your memories. The memories are not in the brain. We can't find them. Now, I'm not talking about one memory, two memories. I'm talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of memories. There's no place in the brain for them. You can't find them. You say, oh, I found one. I, I, I had an operation, and, I, and they probed the brain. And, oh, I remembered one. Oh, it must be in there. No, it's not in there. I can't go into it now, but there's a reason why it's not. Well, we believe it is. Why? Why do you believe anything? Because you want to. You want to believe the memory is in the brain. And so that's why you develop theories that the memory is in the brain. Because you want to. You can't see that it might not be in the brain, it might have other places that it can be. I haven't thought that far. And so naturally, we say, oh, this has got to be stupid. It can't be outside the brain. Why not? Your energy system's outside the brain. I didn't know that, but you can hear your heart. There are instruments that pick up your energy from your heart eight feet in diameter around you. You can go to heart math and you get all kinds of information. So don't cut this short. Don't say, no, that can't happen. What am I doing? I'm raising doubt in your belief system that you haven't thought enough about it. And so, while you are in the illusion, give that some thought. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time here in the illusion. Bye now.